The operator of Fukushima Daiichi has begun releasing groundwater from the nuclear plant into the sea. Officials of Japanese government and Tokyo Electric Power Company are trying to reduce the amount of groundwater that's accumulated around the site. The contaminated water is increasing at a rate of 300 tons a day. TEPCO has pumped up groundwater since August of last year on a trial basis. Workers plan to release some 4,000 tons that has been already decontaminated. They're expected to release 850 tons on Monday and continue to release more over the next three days. Officials say they will pump more groundwater and release it after removing radioactive substances. They also plan to resume the construction of steel walls along the coast to stop the groundwater seeping directly into the sea. The project has been suspended until the groundwater is released. Local authorities and fishermen say they're worried about the effects on the environment if something goes wrong. We have no other choice but to accept the release in order to reduce the amount of contaminated water. But I'm worried how consumers will take it. TEPCO officials say they will conduct a strict monitoring of the discharge. Officials with Japan's meteorological agency are warning a volcano in the southwest may continue to spew rock and ash. They raised the alert level Monday after Mount Aso erupted. These images were captured by an NHK camera. Meteorological agency officials say the eruption occurred on Monday just before 10 a.m. local time. They say smoke rose as high as 2,000 meters. Officials raised the alert level for the area to three on a scale of five. They're cautioning people not to approach the volcano. They've designated a four-kilometer area around the crater off-limits. Also, city officials say about 30 people, including tourists, were near the crater at the time of the eruption. They say all of them were evacuated to safety. And police say they haven't received any reports of injuries. An official with the meteorological agency shed light on what experts have learned. We found that the smoke grows not only vertically, but also horizontally. The eruption could have pyroclastic flows. Experts say there's a possibility magma played a role, but they say the amount appears to be small and a major eruption is unlikely. Some witnesses recorded what they saw. Masaki Takaki was working on his farm when the volcano erupted. A university student recorded this video. He was visiting a sightseeing facility three kilometers west of the crater. He took the video from a car as it sped away. Japan's envoy explained the government's plans to resume a nuclear power production. All Japanese reactors were offline for nearly two years, but one began generating electricity commercially again last month. It is a policy of the government of Japan to restart nuclear power plants as an important base load power source. Once they satisfy the safety standards that have been enhanced in the light of the experiences and lessons learned from the Fukushima Daiichi accident. Oka said Japan takes the IAEA's findings on the 2011 nuclear accident in Fukushima seriously. The report says Japan was insufficiently prepared for a severe nuclear accident. It says many people assumed the country's nuclear plants were safe. Oka said Japan will keep informing the world about decontamination and decommissioning work in Fukushima. Let's have a look over at e News. TV floods threaten Fukushima plant structures. It's a nuclear nightmare territory then. Yeah, if you have too much water sinking beneath the plant, it's just going to lift up some of these radioactive isotopes, make this area a lot more and harder to deal with. A lot of nuclear fuel has actually gone into the ground, 
it will come out at the surface if groundwater rises, which we know it's doing. Radiation levels flowing into the ocean much higher than usual. Mm -hmm. How many times more than usual? Hmm. 10 times, 100 times. Floods may pose threat not only to radiation under Fukushima, but also structures. Severe floods have hit Japan, sending tons of radiation contaminated water from Fukushima nuclear plants into the ocean. Chris Busby, Scientific Secretary of the European Committee of Radiation Risks. There's an enormous amount of radioactivity underneath the plant. The reactors are holed and a lot of the fuel is actually in the ground. And that's mixing with the groundwater. Well normally what they do is they pump that water away but because the groundwater becomes heavily contaminated. And then they pump those into the big tanks. But of course if the groundwater rises as usual as a result of the rain, then that stuff will just come out of the ground, the surface of the ground. And the second problem of course is they affect the integrity of the structures, the actual building structures and the four reactors. And of course, you're into really serious, serious nuclear and more territory. Then it surprised me that they have, haven't got enough pumps to deal with this situation. It's not a situation that's impossible to predict. I mean, all along the lines, we're being told that Tesco could possibly have predicted this and couldn't possibly have predicted that. Well, the answer is they should have. Bags of tan water swept into the Fukushima River during torrential rain, seven sites for radioactive waste generated from the Fukushima nuclear crisis were submerged during torrential rain, raising fears over a possible radiation spill into the environment at the Fukushima number one nuclear plant. Heavy rains caused radiation tainted water from reaching and going into the ocean ditches, but the torrential rains overwhelmed the gates twice in the pre-dawn hours of September 9th and September 11th, the plant operator said. Utility officials said, Rainfall increases the radioactivity level of the water in the drainage system as rainwater accumulates radioactive materials in the surrounding soil when it flows into these ditches. While the drainage water usually contains less than 100 becquerel of beta ray emitting radioactive substances per liter, water measured 750 becquerels per liter on September 11th, said co officials. Now, if we go by their measurements, they're just telling us that the measurements they're gathered. That's a 700% increase just off their numbers alone. NHK September 11th of 2015. Rainwater overflows from Fukushima plant. Pepco said on Friday that it is confirmed the leaks through video footage of the complex. Operator said the leaks occurred at 3 a.m. at 5.20 a.m. and at 6 a.m. on Friday for a total of more than two and a half hours. TIPCO is now checking the radioactive levels of rainwater samples taken from the channel. I mean, what the hell is wrong with these people? Members of the International Atomic Energy Agency have begun discussions on the nuclear deal with Iran and the state of nuclear power in Japan. Officials opened the agency's annual conference on Monday in Vienna. Director General Yukia Amano said the nuclear deal made between Iran and six world powers contributes to the IAEA's verification procedures. U.S. Energy Secretary Ernest Monitz praised the agreement. He said it makes it clear that Iran would not possess nuclear weapons under any circumstances. The head of Iran's Atomic Energy Agency also commented. We likewise expect the IAEA and the E3-EU3 to reciprocate through impartial and objective conclusion of the ongoing process and removal of the unjust sanctions respectively. The IAEA has also submitted its final report on the 2011 Fukushima Daiichi nuclear accident to the conference. Agency officials hope sharing the lessons of Fukushima will improve the safety of nuclear plants. The chairman of Japan's Atomic Energy Commission, Yoshiaki Oka, spoke about his country's restart of a nuclear reactor in southwestern Japan. It was put online in August under new regulations made after the Fukushima accident. All nuclear plants in Japan had been offline for nearly two years. 
This morning, North Korea says it is making nuclear weapons of higher quality and quantity. The country reportedly revamped its atomic bomb production plants. They include the main facility north of Pyongyang. Seth Doan is in Beijing with mounting tensions between North Korea and the United States. Seth, good morning. Good morning. North Korea is taking aim at America once again, saying that if it continues its hostile policy against the DPRK, the North could use nuclear weapons against America at any time. That announcement coming via North Korea state media, which reaffirmed that since 2013, its plutonium and highly enriched uranium facilities at its main nuclear complex, Yongbyong, have been rearranged, changed, or readjusted, and they started normal operation. The nuclear facility had been shuttered in 2007 as part of an agreement with five other nations, including the U.S. This comes just a day after North Korea said it would launch satellites via long-range rockets. The satellites are ostensibly for weather forecasts, but the fear is they could really be used simply to test long-range missiles, and that launch could be timed to a major holiday next month, the anniversary of the founding of the ruling Workers' Party. Nora? All right, Seth Doan in Beijing, thank you so much.